Shalom, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a great opportunity once again that the Lord has granted us. And it's up to us to seize this opportunity, to take advantage of this opportunity, or let it go. All right, every day is an opportunity. Every day is a blessing. Every day is a different thing. Um, if you want, it can be a brand new day. I mean, separate from what you saw yesterday. Or it can be a continuation of a nightmare as you continue to perceive it that way. But we are called to consider every day differently, all right? Because anything is possible in a day. So, but what are you expecting to see and to hear and to experience? It's important that you still you 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 stand firm and declare by your mouth focusing with your heart on a certain thing and fixing your eyes on something and stay there for a while and declare what you want to see in that day. You see, what you want to see in that day is what you see on the inside. You begin by seeing what you're seeing. You begin, you declare it and you are just establishing what you're seeing. That's the very best way of, of, of praying. That's one of the best ways we should pray. All right, and then and that's that's so powerful. It always work. I guarantee you, it always work. Now imagine if you are consistent and you are just praying one prayer, fixing your eyes on one thing. All right, and you are declaring things. You're not changing your mind, fixing your eyes on one thing. I'm telling you, that's one of the ways that we create. So how we create? God never created light without seeing it first. God never created the animals without seeing them first. God never created lights without seeing them first. God never created man without conceiving him first. So he first saw what he wanted to, to do and then he did it. Well, first thing he did, he spoke and what he spoke came to pass. Glory to God. So he's calling us to also learn from him and imitate our father because he's our father. And we are his children and we can imitate our father. Well, when you see a challenge or any situation, well, it can change. I'm telling you, it can change. We have to only know how to do it and also how consistent we are going to be. Uh, it's, it matters. It matters. But if you say it once and, you know, and that's it, you won't come back on that very thing. Well, it will resist. If you resist, you see that it has not changed. You will like, ah, it doesn't work. Well, that's exactly what everybody's doing. But imagine if you just declared something and you knew it has worked and you come tomorrow and you're saying the same thing and the next day you're saying the same thing and you're consistent. And how long does it take? You don't think, you don't need to think about how long. All you need to think about is the answer, the result, the outcoming, the the reality that you want to see come into pass because many people that is the patience they don't have that's the patience they don't have and that's why true patience works you know it comes in because true patience is not you know um giving up and you're like okay i have no other choice no true patience is when you are expecting something and meanwhile something is being done to come to that conclusion for instance a, a farmer will be patient because they are expecting to harvest within a few months or weeks all right but you cannot be patient to harvest waiting for to ha for ha for harvest time without anything uh, sown in the in the in the in the ground 
in the first place you might not have even that ground so you understand that that is a very misplacing or misunderstanding of that word so we are called now every day to sow seeds of life what kinds of seeds are you sowing in your life in your world every day glory to god that we are given this opportunity to do it now we read something that i want to uh, to 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 finish with here in matthew chapter 15 verse 21 up to 28 he says and in verse 28 says then jesus said to her woman you have great faith your request is granted and her daughter was healed at the moment i said um, that something happened to this woman that when she cried out all right she wanted healing for her daughter and something happened the daughter got healed but also this woman got healed the daughter was sick physically but this woman was sick on the inside so when the healing was released by jesus christ both were healed she knew all right that uh, it is possible and she got her healing as well because she was segregated she was pushed away by the disciples can you imagine when the disciples were coming close to jesus and telling jesus not to allow that woman to be close and they're like she's shouting they were not hearing his cry his heart you see this means that sometimes even the people close to what to quote in quote close to jesus or close to god or those who seem to be close to him but not even understand you but not even get it all right but you know what jesus gets it and this is the beautiful thing that you can have a beautiful relationship with him not necessarily with those who claim to be close to him yet they are insensitive to the needs and the cry or the hurt of men jesus said well you got your healing and the child was healed at that moment instantly in other words this is beautiful and then we are told in verse 29 jesus left there and went along the sea of galilee then he went up on a mountainside and sat down great crowd came to him bringing the lame the blind the cripple the mute the many and many others and laid them in his feet and he healed them the people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking the crippled made well the lame walking and the blind seeing and they praised the god of israel now what we see here is the different different kinds of sicknesses i mean the impossible cases were brought to him now this version doesn't bring it well we're gonna see we're gonna let's look into this amplified bible again to make it a bit clearer and also king james version they make it clearer i'm gonna read in verse 29 it says and jesus went on no rather uh, 29 and jesus went on from there and passed along the shore of the sea of galilee then he went up into the hills and kept sitting there so jesus was seated somewhere after passing by galilee and he went up on the hill look he used to go up on the hill and then he sat there on the hill all right it's a hap, uh, it's a uh, higher attitude uh, altitude verse 30 says and a great multitude came to him all right and the great and a great multitude came to him a great multitude came to him bringing with them the lame the maimed the blind the dumb and many others and they put them down at his feet and he cured them I want you to to notice something here strange you know of course all these are serious cases because you see the impossible cases brought to him these are cases that can only be healed by Christ all right because they brought to him the lame the lame that means either they were um, crippled somehow had crutches or not or they, any deformation Jesus says and the Bible says here that they brought the lame to him that's amazing 
Number two, the maimed. Now, I think some Bibles don't get this because you find it's rare to find this word maimed. Some verses don't bring it out that way. Then in King James Version, we find it there. In the Amplified Bible, we find it there. It says maimed. Now, of course, if somebody is a lame, right, they are not only lame on the outside. Remember, I'm only talking about the healing on the inside and the outside. The healing never occurs only on the outside. There always touch, all right? It always touch the, the inside. And he says that the maimed was also brought to him. And you know the maimed, these are people that were missing certain parts of their bodies. And this is amazing. Imagine someone who was lacking a certain part of the body. All right. Now, whether it was an accident or it was born like that, something terrible. If somebody doesn't have a leg, for instance, doesn't have, not crippling, not not crippled, but you don't have that part of your body, right? Um, on your body, there's something missing. But then they brought them to Jesus. Now, like I'm saying, you might never know the sadness, the sorrow of this person who lacks a certain part of his body. Or probably the questions he's, he has in his heart, asking himself whether God does care for him or not. And the, the sadness in the heart might be terrible, but even be stronger than what you can imagine. But this is just amazing, all right? That Jesus Christ, in his mercy, in his healing, in his kindness, he reached out and healed those people. Can you imagine that you are there and there's no arm, the arm wasn't there and the arm grew. Imagine seeing an arm growing for the first time when somebody is already a grown up person. And imagine somebody growing a leg, growing a certain part of the body that wasn't there. You know, this was beyond words. Now, of course, the miracle that we always celebrate is that of the outside, which everybody can see that, my goodness, but we'll never understand the joy, the healing, the wiping of tears in the heart of this individual who experienced that miracle. This joy, this joy, you know, that joy is the purpose of God. Seeing his people healed, set free, happy, rejoicing. The blind, imagine getting their sight. Imagine to live all your life in blindness and all limitation. And many others, there were many cases, and they put them down at his feet and he cured them. Glory to God. You know, this is an amazing God. Jesus is wonderful. So that the crowd was amazed when they saw the dumb speaking, the maimed made all the lame walking and the blind seeing, and they recognized and praised and thanked and glorified the God of Israel. You know, I'm just imagining again, like the healing, yeah, about this healing that took place on the outside, but also on the inside. It's just amazing, glory. It's just amazing. It is just amazing. We give God glory and praises. We give God glory and praises. He's just wonderful. Shalom, shalom.